This is the Barbados Today Evening News for Friday, September 29. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. There appears to be no end in sight to the current impasse between management of the state-owned Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation and striking workers. CBC employees stayed off the job for the third straight day today over a protracted pay dispute. At a press conference this afternoon, Chairman Peter Earle said the strike has had limited impact on the radio and television operations. He indicated that he has no immediate intention to move away from CBC's stance of not paying outstanding increments to workers who exceeded the salary scale. There were also reports that workers at the Barbados Water Authority are ready to join the protest. And when pressed, Earle acknowledged that an escalated strike would be cause for concern. Today marked the third day um, where some employees are off the jobs. So at the moment we have three radio stations that remain on air um, with some periods uh, that are automated while TV8 has made some adjustments to its schedule including a temporary break uh, to Good Morning Barbados as well as the midday news. But because the vast majority of our staff have not joined the, the industrial action, we have been able to, to, to maintain our customer service operations for MCTV. And of course, those of you who watch um, Channel 8 on nights would, be, would recognize that we have been able to maintain our major event news product and our three radio stations continue to function. So what we're trying to do is to minimize the disruptions, especially uh, as it impacts on our, on, our, on our clients and our customers. And we would therefore like to take this opportunity to thank our clients for their patience and to thank the team who has remained on the inside to ensure that we remain as efficient as possible, possible and we, we're not, uh, we don't shut down completely. And there was also protest action at St. Leonard's Boys School today. Barbados Today understands that teachers staged a sick out to protest the dismissal of a clerk. The students were dismissed two hours early due to the lack of teachers at the institution. In other news this evening, Tourism Minister Richard Seeley has announced that construction on the stalled controversial Hyatt Hotel in the city will begin within weeks. He did not provide details, but Seeley told Democratic Labour Party faithful that town and country planning has already granted approval. The $200 million project has been the subject of a court case for the past several months and is a vital part of government's economic recovery program. Attorney at law David Comishong has mounted a court challenge to Prime Minister Ferndale Stewart's decision to grant permission to developer Mark Maloney to construct the multi-story hotel in Bay Street. The case was adjourned last month and both sides are awaiting a ruling from Madam Justice Sonia Richards. Delivering the party's weekly Aster B. Watts lecture today, Seeley said he is satisfied that with, that with Hyatt and other projects, the tourism industry is set to surpass recent records. These projects started with the Gas Sanders Gas Green in 2015 and will complete by 2020. We'll see 2,300 new rooms in production, providing a needed boost and modernization to the tourism industry in Barbados. We will build out the capacity that is needed for sustained growth, not only for the industry, but for the economy as a whole, as tourism's final product will depend on all sectors of the economy. And likewise, these sectors also depend on tourism. We have always sought to ensure, wherever possible, developers take cognizance of the environment and sustainability. Therefore, measures to conserve energy and self-sufficiency are promoted. The projects, of course, represent perhaps close to a billion US dollars in investments. Meanwhile, Seeley says he does not expect the recent Standard & Poor's downgrade to have a direct impact on the local tourism industry. Certainly. They will look at the investment grade. I think that's only natural. I mean, I'm not going to leave with that, and, you know, but, but I would like to think that it is not only what the investment grade says. It is what the government country is doing. 
and one had to be fair uh, with respect to creating the right environment for investments in the tourism sector and encouraging tourism related investments. Um, the government has, has, has done its part. There are some other things that we need to do. And, and I'm certain that on this track, in, in the fullness of time, we will start to see the, the investment, uh, so the rating agencies uh, look at us differently. But I think that I'm not going to say we should ignore it. But at the same time, I think that if we look at the total picture, tourism can still continue to meet and surpass its targets um, in, in, in the face of what the rating agencies have to say. There are calls for greater attention to be paid to health care following natural disasters. The call comes from the Caribbean Nurses Organization in the wake of two major hurricanes which caused widespread damage in the Caribbean. And the CNO is hoping that this topic will be highlighted at its next biennial conference to be held here next year. Conference Director Mary Thompson says education is also important. Nurses need to be educated. Nurses need to be skilled in disaster, disaster management and the care that is necessary after disasters. Now, we have focused on the number of persons that actually died in the hurricane. My interest today is in the number of persons that will die soon after the hurricane because there are limited health care facilities. There's going to be the possibility of outbreak of diseases. Thompson pointed to the need for a functional structure the profession could turn to in the event of a disaster to ensure continuity of service. On a structure that is functional, that is tried and proven, that will permit us to continue to carry on, that can be accomplished through one of the educational and practical sessions in this conference because one of the things that I am sure that our education director would, would agree that we have to focus on disaster management. Who call and get your yarns and potatoes? Wait, my girl, how you want to see you for long? I can't. How you keep it? But you don't sell any nation paper no more. But that paper is selling. There's much now it stops selling that. Oh. Look, one time I would make a little dollar from the sun to sun. But when Sunday night, I'm still trying to get the weather there. <laughs> well, you know, you can't call that the Sunday sun no more. You're going to call that sunset news. Call at no time down you stale. People complain that they ain't got nothing in it to read. And the price keep going up all the time, all the time. A woman abused me so sick the other day, telling me that she just read Barbados today or life for free. Mm -hmm. I can take that abusing soul, so I switch to my potatoes and yams. Well, let me tell you, if pork selling, you got to raise pigs. How much for the yams? Oh, 75 cents a pound. Oh, but that's cheaper than that stale news. Give me. How much you want? A pound. Only a pound? Anyhow, these eating real good. Let me wrap them up for you. Come. The Barbados Today, news you can trust. Thank you for staying with us. We're back now with news from the region. Barbudans have begun returning home after government lifted the mandatory evacuation order, which was imposed earlier this month after the passage of Hurricane Irma. The order was lifted from midnight following a cabinet decision. At least 46 people went home on Friday, with some telling local radio stations that they were pleased with government's decision to lift the evacuation order. And on the international scene, French President Emmanuel Macron is getting support from German Chancellor Angela Merkel for plans to reform the European Union after Brexit. But many European leaders are skeptical of any new projects and they are doubtful that voters are keen to give up national control. We get the details in this Reuters report. They may be all smiles, but for EU leaders meeting in Estonia, Brexit frustrations continue to simmer, as they did in London when another top EU official spoke on Thursday. I continue to believe that Brexit is a very negative project, that it is in fact a waste of time and energy. Three months of talks have so far been bogged down in a spat over the divorce bill. But British Prime Minister Theresa May insists Britain will remain a strong partner to the EU as she visited NATO troops in Estonia. And while we are leaving the European Union, 
As I have said many times, we are not leaving Europe. So the United Kingdom is unconditionally committed to maintaining Europe's security. The head of the EU Commission not feeling so optimistic. Jean-Claude Juncker said on Friday only miracles could move talks towards discussing future trade relations by the end of October. Meanwhile, Merkel and French President Emmanuel Macron are focusing on their plans to reform the EU after Brexit. Macron's won backing from Merkel for what she called intense cooperation between Paris and Berlin. You know, Macron's proposals are an attempt to get the whole of the EU stroke EU project back on track after, you know, quite a, a fractious uh, five year period. Um, so in that sense, uh, it's it's a welcome proposal. I think uh, the German government recognizes, too, that you know, it's time to put the crisis mode behind us and start moving forward again. That's news this evening. Remember, you can get more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marie-Claire Williams. Good evening. <laughs>